In fact, statement tonight, last night on 60 Minutes, President Obama talked with Steve Croft. As usual, Mr. Obama was very much in control, except when it came to Syria. You may remember that in 2012, about a year before the cruel tyrant Assad used poison gas on civilians, Mr. Obama threatened him. Red line. Yeah. You didn't have to say that. Yeah. And there have been reports that it wasn't in your speech. No, it wasn't. That you just sort of ad-libbed it. Yeah. Look, if you're putting all the weight on that particular phrase, then in terms of how it was interpreted in Washington, I think you, you make a legitimate point. I've got to tell you, though, I don't regret at all saying that if I saw Bashir al-Assad using chemical weapons on his people, that that would change my assessments in terms of what we were or were not willing to do in Syria. But you didn't and say that. that. Well, you said you said you drew the red line. I, I, look, I, I don't want to make too big a deal out of it. I, but I think that. Once again, Charles Krauthammer joins us from Washington. So the president obviously had trouble with that question. But the most important part of all this is what happened after Mr. Obama didn't do anything to Assad, correct? And it's not just what happened in Syria, where the Russians came in and appeared to pull chestnuts out of the fire, did this uh, phony deal where supposedly chemical weapons were all evacuated. They weren't. Chemical weapons were used later in the war. Obama did nothing. It's not even just Syria. And when Obama says it was missing, it was interpreted in Washington. No, it was interpreted in Beijing, in Moscow, in Tehran, by allies all over the world. When the United States president says the word red line, that has a meaning. Obama said it's a phrase, as if it was some kind of random phrase. It has a meaning in diplomacy. You cross, we act. They crossed, he didn't act. And that, as a result, you see all the aggressive actions around the world. People understood that this is fundamentally a weak and feckless president who will not resist. Hence the South China Sea, hence Ukraine, hence Crimea, hence the, the threats even today to Eastern Europe, and hence Iran's essentially taking over Syria and Lebanon as well. Well, that's the all worst of these part things, for me. The worst part for me is, and I said this at the time, so this isn't Monday morning quarterbacking. As soon as Assad dropped that gas killing those babies and the children and all of that, the next day the U.S. Air Force should have just bombed his Air Force to smithereens. And that's easy to do, as you know. They only have one big air base. We could have taken that out in an hour, okay? And that was it. And then we don't need to ground troops. We don't need a big war occupation. Bang! You don't put another plane up there. But since the United States didn't do anything, Russia, as you rightly said, came in, and Iran came in, and the slaughter began. And what did the slaughter lead to? Uh, millions of migrants leaving the area, flooding the zone in Europe, terrorism on, on the march, ISIS uh, rising in power because of the chaos. All of these things came from President Obama's failure to do anything. But I don't think the president would ever admit that. No, I don't think he's admitted that to himself at all. I mean, you look at the victory uh, tour he's been at for the last, oh, I don't know, two weeks or so, celebrating all the great things his presidency has accomplished. His presidency is going to be a, remembered as a historical uh, parenthesis. He's not willing to admit that. I kind of understand. You spend eight years of your life as pr president of the United States. You don't want to admit that your achievements are written on sand. But you look at Obamacare, that's written on sand. He never got the, bu the buy-in from the opposition or from the country. He never got cap and trade. He had to go through executive orders. They're all going to be canceled, or the majority of them are going to be canceled. He tried to ram through immigration reform, did not succeed, tried to do it by his pen. Executive orders stopped by the courts. This is a failed presidency. And I think the reason is he overreached. And he also sort of overestimated himself. The supreme self-confidence that you see even to this day in that 60 Minutes interview the other night is what I think was the downfall. He thought, I know more about this than anybody else. I'm smarter. I understand the Middle East. And I, if I just say the words red line and I go back on it, people are still going to respect me. And this belief he has in what he calls the international community, which is a fiction in international norms, a fiction 
and he adhered to that. I mean, the motto is, the, uh, what is it, the moral arc of the universe is long, but it tends uh, towards justice. Something he got from Martin Luther King. The problem is that that doesn't apply to the so-called community of nations. No, there it is absolutely no doesn't apply. Now, there's, there's a no lesson guarantee here. of justice at the other There's end. a lesson here for Donald Trump, and a big, big lesson. Because um, the president-elect uh, has a tendency to speak off the cuff, as Obama did on the red line thing, and to say whatever he wants to say on his mind. But if you say it as president, you better back it up, correct? Well, that's where we're, I think we're going into very, very, very stormy waters with Obama, with, with uh, Donald Trump. Obama understood what he was doing. He meant what he said, and then he backed off. With Trump, he said so many things, many of them outrageous. Just look at the interview he did today with the German and the British newspaper, talking about NATO in offhanded ways, talking about the EU, talking about obsolescence. I mean, every word he says has an impact. The problem is he does so many of these things that are outrageous, never heard before. I think they cancel each other out. Yeah, so do I. So, I don't think anybody, but, but I'm talking it, about big things. Well, he hasn't gonna, done he's going to be tested, and he's going to be tested quick, Donald Trump. Well, let and me give you, if real we're quick, talking about a big thing, real quick, Go ahead. Taiwan. You don't screw around with the Chinese in Taiwan. Right. One they've China. Sent, they have sent a carrier, the Chinese have sent a carrier near, into the Taiwan Strait. If you're looking for one area where it could be his red line, and he may be challenged, you should start worrying yeah, about that Yeah, the Chinese are certainly going to do that because the Chinese are worried economically, so they're going to they're see how far they can push it. Charles Crowder, everybody. Direct